David Fells here at Midlow Grange Farm. We still farm here and I carry out the spraying operation, uh, roughly about 600 acres here with the two farms that we run here with our neighbours and also have a role as part-time technical advisor with uh, Agri uh, for this southern region. So when we're looking at getting the best out of our residual herbicide chemistry, it's important to start right back at the basics. So really important to look at getting the seedbed right, which actually relies upon having the right drainage, the right soil structure so we can get the best uh, crumb structure into which to place the seed which then gives us both good soil coverage so that that's protecting the seed from the residual herbicide but also if we've got that fine crumb structure it will mean that we get uh, a good uh, layer that will hold the chemical in order to retain its effectiveness against the uh, weeds that are going to come through at some point. When we're looking at the coverage of the seed, a good target is around about 30-35 millimetres. That would be a good protection, but that's important to say that that should be a, a good crumb structured settled soil coverage, not just one 35 millimetre clod sitting on top of the seed. Looking at spray quality for the residual herbicides, there's always a degree of compromise. The finer droplets that you produce will be less controllable and more likely to drift. So whilst there is a requirement to have a slightly coarser spray to re reduce that drift potential. Nevertheless, it is important to retain a good number of droplets in the spray spectrum in order to create enough coverage of the soil surface. So there is a trade-off again uh, with water volumes whereby using a higher, slightly higher volume, let's say 200 litres a hectare compared to 100 litres a hectare, uh, there is now quite a lot of evidence to show, a lot of trials work to show a much better result from the 200 litres compared to the 100 litres uh, used for the residual herbicides. I think it's well worth checking that nozzles are the right sort and up to spec uh, because that can have a huge influence on how well the products are applied at the end of the day. One of the massive factors in terms of uh, reducing drift is boom height. Uh, if we have a, a, a stable boom applying at the right height, let's say 50 centimetres with normal setup, then we can afford to maybe use a slightly more medium spray which will give us better coverage. It's difficult to say what the ideal spraying speed is. I, if I had to pick a number for m many average situations, I, I would say that 12 kilometres per hour is a reasonable compromise between getting on and doing the job but retaining a degree of control over the boom.